So from my last video I've made, a lot of you have asked the question as to how it would be possible to enable hosting of your Telegram bot on services such as Heroku, which can do it for free. And uh, if you're still unsure about how to make a Python bot for Telegram, head on to my previous video. But otherwise, let's dive into it. So in the first place for this project to work, we must ensure that our code is compatible and will work with a webhook. A webhook is basically another way of requesting information from Telegram. It's different from polling that I've used in my previous video in a way that it needs a server with an IP address, an SSL certificate, and a couple of open ports. I think this diagram portrays well the difference between the two methods. So here we have a polling in which our machine constantly asks Telegram for uh, servers whether or not any users have sent a new information and fittingly for its name that's why it's called polling. On the webhook on the other hand is a concept in which once Telegram servers receive messages from the user they just send it directly to our machine which is a server. Since Telegram servers need to send the information you need to provide an open port, an IP address, an SSL certificate all of uh, which I've described earlier. Alright so Telegram and I strongly recommend using the webhook method for anything beyond testing because webhooks are standard if you want to develop a Telegram bot which often means that you have to pay for a server. However, in this video, I'll be showing you how to do this for free using Heroku. Okay, now I have already created a, a new folder and a virtual environment for my project. So this is my folder and I've made the bot.py file and uh, I've also created a virtual environment. And if you don't know what that is, you might want to look out in that description box. Okay, so to set up a webhook, we must first install a new framework called uh, Flask alongside our PyTelegram bot API wrapper, which will help us in deploying our bot. Here I have two terminal windows open. pip3 install. Firstly, let's install the PyTelegram bot API module. And uh, Windows users, uh, you can ignore the 3 just here. Okay, now let's install Flask. Excellent. So we've installed the two libraries that we will be needing for this video. Now let's just head over to my GitHub repository. Let's just copy all the code from my previous video. All right. So here we got the code from my previous video. Command copy, paste it here. Now uh, we got the code from the previous video right here. So if I were to host this on Heroku right now, it wouldn't really work as a webhook. The primary reason being is that Heroku requires a couple of things to work from a Python application, namely a requirements.txt and a proc file. The requirements.txt file is acquired through a simple pip3 freeze requirements.txt. So uh, here, if you're unsure what we're doing, we're taking the output of this command and saving it into a requirements.txt file. Okay, so now if I run this, you should see a new requirements.txt file pop up here. Basically, all it contains are the third-party libraries, everything we will need to make our bot work, all the dependencies and wrappers, etc. This is so that Heroku knows which ones to install. The second file, the proc file, as described by Heroku, specifies the commands that are included by the app on startup. So I'm sure you know the typical execution process in the command line for Python apps, which usually goes like a Python bot.py, you're executing bot.py. Basically, that's what they mean by the command. So here's the proc file format. And firstly, it requires the process type, and then it requires the command. The command is obvious. Now the process type is explained just below this. So here says the web process type. A Heroku's app's web process type is special. It is the only process type that can receive external HTTP traffic from Heroku's routers. So this is exactly what we want. We want the web process type because we'll be receiving information from Telegram servers. I think at this point it is obvious that what our proc file must include is firstly as explained here the process type and we chose the web process type and the command for our bot to run which is python and I'm gonna use the three here just like I do on macOS bot.py. You have to make sure that the proc file does not have any extension. For example, proc file.txt would not work. So no extension, just proc file. This is what you put inside of it. If the name of the file that has all the code in it is bot.py. Excellent. Now that both of these files are provided, we can make sure that the code itself is compatible. Kindly enough, the creators of the PyTelegram bot API wrapper have included example bot files for their wrapper. Let's head over there. This is one of the examples for a Heroku webhook. 
if we take a look at what we have here, so here we have our standard message handlers that I've shown how to use in my previous video, but also we see a server flask object. And in here we have some server decorators. In short, what these flask decorators accomplish is that they set up the bot for a webhook in a way that the PyTelegram bot API wrapper processes data that the Telegram server sends to it. Here we append the token because we want to ensure that nobody other than us is picking up our information or sending it to us. If we actually head over to Telegram's webhook documentation, we can see that Telegram recommends using a secret path in the URL, such as the URL and the token. Since nobody else knows our bot's token, and we can be pretty sure it's Telegram. Under the webhook function right here, we firstly remove the webhook to make sure that everything's clean and there are no errors. And then we set the webhook to to our Heroku project, a link for which we will get very soon, and then we append the token to the end of it. Then at the very end, we use a server.run to start up our bot, we put a host, and the port we use is either the port in the environment or 5000, whichever one is available. If you're unsure about what if name equals, equals main does, then I'll also leave a link for that in the description. I'll just copy all of the server stuff, not the handlers. And since we're not using polling anymore, I'm just going to delete this and paste it here. Also, we must ensure that we're also initializing the flask object as well. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to set it right below here. This, we must first get rid of time because we're not using that. We must also import the flask which, because we're using it here. So first thing I'm going to do is from flask, I'm going to import the flask object. And then we're also going to import request from the same library because we're using it right here. All right. And last thing we must import is OS because we use the OS.envir. Excellent. Now that the code is ready to be hosted on the server and can work with a webhook, let's head over to the Heroku website and create an account. I already have an account. I'll just log in. Uh, for you, it'll look pretty empty. Don't worry. We'll soon be deploying our bot. So the main deal here is how you want your bot to be deployed. If you have a GitHub repository with a code, might just as well connect to that. And every time your code will be pushed to GitHub, then Heroku will update it for you. Uh, a flaw with this method I see is that wherever you deploy using GitHub, you must have the repository private because otherwise you're going to be exposing your bot's token. And to have a private repository, you'll have to pay for the GitHub service. So in order for this to be fully free, I'll be showing you how to do it using the Heroku client, this method. First of all, we need to make sure that we install the Heroku client. So here's the page for the installation of the Heroku client. Here they show various installations. I'm going to be using the Mac OS installer. And for that, I'll just need to copy and paste this command into my terminal but for windows you can just use the 64 and 32 bit installer if you have ubuntu then you know what to do also before installing this you must also have git installed with you if you don't have that installed i'll also leave a link in the description now let's head over i'm just going to paste it right here click enter if you're on windows and you're installing this make sure to restart your powershell so you want to cd into your dev folder which i already have done if we take a look here we have the proc file the bot.py and the requirements.txt. So now that we have installed the Heroku client, uh, you want to make sure that you have logged into it on your terminal. This is done through Heroku login. So I'm going to click any key. Now it opens up the browser. I click login. Now it says you can close this page and return to your client should now be logged in all right let's close this page and return to our client so here it says logging in done so at this point we want to use the heroku client and we want to create a new app i'm going to use heroku create now what this accomplishes is that it creates our Heroku app. It also gives us a link that I have uh, told you about earlier. We can copy this link and we just paste it down here into your Heroku project. Now that we have got all of this figured out, I am gonna do some Git stuff here. If you don't know how to use Git, it's an extremely important tool to know how to use. So I will also leave a tutorial in the description box on how to use it. But basically what I'm doing here is I'm adding this whole folder, the dev folder with the bot.py, the proc file and the requirements.txt to my buffer. And I'm committing, which is like saving my changes. So the M flag gives us the ability to post a message along with our commit we have committed the file and now we just go for the git push 
Heroku Master. And what this does is it pushes everything to the server. It starts up the build process. So it's building the app. Here, as you can see, it says Python app detected. It's installing all the requirements, the proc file declare types, web, etc. Meanwhile, I'm also going to show you how we can see the logs that Heroku provides. For that, we can use Heroku logs. And the T flag provides us with a live log. So anything that happens will be updated live in our command. Click enter. Let's take a look at our logs. So it says state changed from crash starting, state changed from starting to up. Looks like it's good. Build succeeded. Now, if we go back to Telegram and let's head to the at link bot and let's click start. Excellent, it works. Let's try something. This is Justin. And bam, looks like it works. It gives us a link and everything works out here. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Like this video, share and subscribe. Thanks.